Meta for working closely with us on these webinars. And today we're very fortunate to have two highly qualified speakers who are going to speak about the use of technology to combat COVID. Before I hand off the microphone to Francis to introduce our speakers, I want to remind everyone of the intention and the ground rules of the conversation today. The purpose of this global speaker series is to have an open and honest learning conversation. This is a conversation between practitioners in cities and governments and partners supporting those entities. These calls are not on the record and we ask that you not attribute the comments made today or questions asked to the speakers unless the materials are made available after or you have the person's express permission to do so. We're really thrilled at the response to this webinar. We're at capacity with over 90 countries represented and to facilitate this discussion as a matter of practicality, we ask that you use the chat function to pose questions. If you're dialed in, please wait until the question and answer break to unmute uh, your line. Um, and if you have any issues, please put them either in the chat function or the Q&A. Um, now I'm gonna hand over the floor to Francis to introduce our speakers for today. Thank you, uh, Lauren, and welcome back to many of you. Welcome to new participants. It's great to be connected. I'm sitting in an empty office in the World Bank in Singapore. We've gone uh, on home-based work virtually everywhere uh, in the world uh, at the World Bank. Today, uh, it's, so it's particularly uh, appropriate that today we look at the use of technologies in cities that are affected and are facing this uh, COVID-19 uh, crisis. We're, I believe, extremely lucky to have two very interesting speakers. The first one will be Professor Yang Long from the School of Architecture at Tsinghua University who has prepared an extensive inventory and analysis of technology used in China in recent months. And it's a quite impressive uh, array of applications and platforms and interesting ideas that hopefully uh, many other cities can emulate. We'll then uh, have Liora uh, Schechter, uh, who is the CIO and uh, Smart City Director of the City of Tel Aviv, take us to her city, to Tel Aviv, uh, where she will uh, show us uh, how the city and its citizens are adapting to the unfolding crisis. Each speaker will speak for about 20 minutes. Uh, we'll then move to Q&A uh, following the rules uh, explained by Lauren. Uh, Professor Ying, we're, we're really happy to have you with us. So without further ado, the floor is yours. Okay, so shall I share my screen? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, I will check my timer. Okay, 20 minutes. Hi, hello everybody. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all the participants. And uh, I think it is my great honor to be here. Mm, to be invited by the Global Resilient Cities Network and World, well, World Bank Group China. Mm, and today I, I like to introduce some um, about our summaries about how smart technologies ha have been applied in uh, China to combat with the, the disease, the, the virus, and how they help improve the city resilience. And I have to admit, um, I am from the Department of City Planning. And uh, so in this way, you can see I am uh, not uh, majored in, for example, public health, not for IP. Uh, so uh, I just uh, uh, briefly show how technologies, uh, especially smart technologies, has been applied in China in the past uh, uh, I think about two months since the uh, since the outbreak of uh, COVID-19 uh, in this January. Uh, so actually, uh, so actually, uh, uh, for me in China, I have also experienced the 2003 SARS in Beijing. 
when I was a graduate student on the campus of uh, Tsinghua University. And uh, uh, this year I am also on the campus as a uh, uh, faculty in the university. And uh, I just uh, conduct a summary for how smart technologies have been, I think to some degree extensively applied in the process. And um, uh, actually the main background is uh, industrial revolution in process uh, right now. Uh, I, I, I think especially in the past uh, uh, 10 years in the world. So uh, we didn't uh, conduct a very in-depth research in a very specific uh, technology, for example. We just uh, do some, for example, something like a literature review, but here we just uh, do the technology review. And uh, I show a diagram here. I have summarized the 10 smart, smart technologies uh, related to, uh, I think, to smart cities. And uh, um, in the following, uh, for example, 15 minutes, I will try to introduce how they have been applied in practice. And I like to, uh, uh, and um, um, I think uh, the cities of China benefit from these smart technologies. And uh, for different stakeholders, for example, uh, uh, the government, the medical staff, and companies and the citizens like me. So uh, here we have indicated uh, for stakeholders and uh, uh, actually smart technologies here are not limited by smart cities developed by the Chinese government. Actually, um, almost, um, um, uh, I think uh, I have summarized the more technologies uh, sponsored or proposed by private companies, technology companies, not by directly by the government. Although uh, the, uh, uh, actually smart city initiatives have been adopted in China since 2013. However, my summary will not be limited to the government initiatives. So first, uh, let me uh, first uh, uh, let us uh, come to the first technology, big data. Actually, um, for me, I am quite familiar with big data since in my lab, I we have conducted a lot of research on using big data to understanding uh, our cities, our citizens, and their behavior. For example. So in the past two months, uh, actually, I uh, I like to mention. What I am, uh, 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 for example, introducing here is for the COVID-19, uh, for the early stage or the middle stage, not for the late stage like now. Uh, so that is what I like to, to, to indicate uh, um, actually right now. So for, for big data, I think uh, I have uh, several friends in uh, working for, for example, for internet companies like uh, Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent, and working for mobile phone carrier companies like China Mobile, China, China Unicom, and Telecom, uh, and Telecom, China Telecom. They told me they are quite busy to support the different parties to uh, understand how people are flowing, uh, for example, are, are flowing from one city to other city, and to understand the uh, help the government to understand, for example, the epidemic situation at different city, and even at very low, uh, uh, very high resolution scale. For example, the cases, I mean the COVID-19 cases, now some cities have the neighborhood level mapping visualization, and then there are also some analysis on what were people are seeing on the internet to understand the, um, uh, the motions, for example. So anyway, the big data, I think, to my understanding, um, really helps uh, a lot for our combating uh, with uh, the, the virus. Second one is uh, artificial intelligence. So data is data. Uh, and uh, to, under, to understand the data, we need uh, AI. I think AI also helps a lot, for example, to, uh, to improve the quality of the analysis and the forecast for the for the event. 
and also there are also some uh, complications on the uh, AI service, not the people are providing service, and that are AI, I mean the autonomous something are providing services. And then there are also some, for example, to measure the temperature, the AI also helps a lot for the system, for example. And also even for understanding the medical images. And the third one is the mobile uh, internet. I think that is the most important technologies helping us, helping improve the city resili uh, resilience. For example, in China we have uh, for, for our university and almost all the universities right now are teaching online. And um, it is our sixth uh, already, um, I think for, uh, for our university calendar, it is our sixth uh, uh, so-called week already. And we have been teaching online, like we use Zoom, we use uh, different uh, apps and a lot of uh, requests for the education and for working as well. For example, for me, I am from the industry of planning and design. Almost all the people from my industry are working online and communicate, collaborate online. And also for, uh, for example, the tele, uh, telemedicine is also important um, for remote, uh, uh, for remotely uh, to do the service. So anyway, now mobile uh, internet, are, uh, I think it, uh, is very important uh, uh, to some degree is the most important smart technology is helping us. I think also helping the world facing the situation right now. And uh, uh, the fourth one is about the cloud computing and, uh, and to my understanding and uh, uh, my friends from the uh, internet companies and from the survey, uh, from the, the industry, they told me, uh, for example, Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent, how be enlarging or increase the capacity for the cloud storage and the cloud computing, since there are too many people are, are working, are, are leisuring online. So they need to uh, increase the capacity to guarantee uh, the stable service provided. Okay, the fifth one is the um, internet, internet of things, all the wearable something, all the uh, sensors, I think that are also important. For example, there are some applications for to, to track the medical waste uh, in Mingbo city to understand the, uh, the logistics or the, uh, the waste flow, uh, 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 how they flow in space. Uh, uh, so they help a lot. And also in the hospital, for example, the cabin hospitals, and they also adopted the internet uh, intelligent sensors to help understand uh, uh, help understand how people are using the space to optimize, for example, the layout, the capacity. So that are quite important. However, uh, I think Internet of Things uh, um, are not among the most uh, important uh, smart technologies in my introduction. However, uh, in my opinion, I think I uh, I like to to prospect in the future. For example, ten year ten years is later, or twelve years is later, or even five year, five years is later. If we also have similar event, so if we have the similar event, that would be the most important technology helping our city, our citizens. That is my my prospect actually. So here we come to robots. Um, so to avoid infection, and in China, in some cities, and they are providing services using robots. For example, in hotel, they are deliver food to people to to the quarantined groups uh, uh, to to avoid face to face, person to face, uh, uh, person to person con contacts. And also in the hospital from one zone to other zone, uh, there, are, there are also applications to deliver medicines using robots. And there are also services in uh, uh, for supermarket, for citizen side, not limited to the medical side. 
So next one is about the vertical reality, or we can also have the augmented reality here. I think they also help a lot for citizens, yeah, especially for citizens. For example, uh, in Tibet, uh, and the, uh, since currently, uh, even now, uh, actually even right now, almost all the museum, all the museum, all the snow resorts are closed. Mm, so for example, in Tibet, in Lhasa city, the Patala uh, Museum are also providing service using the virtual reality to, to welcome people visit their museum. Physically closed, however, digitally or virtually, they are open to, to the citizens. And some uh, in business, there are also a lot of application uh, for using virtual UI uh, reality to do service, like the to to sell uh, the vehicles uh, online and uh, to to have a look at the vehicle. Uh, uh, I think the experience is also very good. So since the uh, for example the stores are closed, so they are uh, uh, they can do this, and I. I'm also tried. I also tried the service uh, service provided by a snow resort, and they are they were selling uh, apartments. I also tried, and the experience uh, experience is good. I think the working reality applications are on are not uh, only limited to uh, the COVID nineteen process. Uh, actually, as normal condition in China, we also uh, they are also there are also a lot of applications. So next one is about the intelligent construction. As you know, uh, in Wuhan we have the fire of fire mountain and the gold mountain hospitals and uh, constructed very quickly. And in this process, I think uh, for the software they applied the beam, the building information model to support to to speed up the construction and the even the design and the management manage process. And, um, and there are also some application for prefabricate construction for the two hospitals in Wuhan and really help a lot for the construction process. Anyway, I think intelligent construction also help a lot here uh, right in China. Okay, the uh, next one is uh, about the blockchain. I have to admit, I have very uh, uh, limited knowledge for uh, blo uh, for blockchain. However, the central government paid a lot of attention to blockchain, uh, I think since the last year in China. And uh, the president, President uh, Xi also uh, paid a lot of attention to that. And, uh, uh, and uh, I think there are some emerging applications using blockchain to help uh, to increase the information flow, to guarantee the data security, to guarantee the data, uh, for example, the privacy issue. Yes, they help, but just the emerging application. Okay, the last one is about the sharing economy. Uh, I like to put the sharing economy as the last <laughs> emerging of the smart technology. Uh, I think sharing economy is not limited to like Uber, like um, sharing work or co-work, or the sharing bikes. Here in uh, in the past two months, we, are, we can also witness some applications for sharing resources. And for example, the TikTok company, one app very for the video, uh, 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 a video company, and the TikTok. Uh, actually, they bought the uh, one one cinema actually, uh, uh, one film. Uh, since in the past three, several months, all the cinemas in China have been closed, not open. So the company uh, actually donate the film to all the uh, 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 Chinese citizens to help them to stay at home better. Uh, I think uh, uh, essentially, I think it is a business. However, the citizens really enjoy it a lot. They do not need to pay online or uh, uh, to the cinema even. 
and the sharing services, the sharing technologies, actually some universities, some, some small, even small or start up, uh, start up companies also donate services freely, uh, no charge to the government to help uh, city level government and the central level government, for example, the Ministry of Health, they do, uh, so they do share their services and the technologies freely, free of charge. So that is the sharing economy. I think that is also uh, very important. Uh, okay, here I come to the conclusion of my talk today. So generally, uh, so if we sum up, um, according to my observation, as a urban planning major scientist, uh, who is not so so uh, so uh, so familiar with each of technology, actually, now we can see the mobile. Uh, sorry, the uh, big data AI and and the mobile internet. And they are the most important three smart technologies helping our city to com compete, compete with the COVID-19 in the process. I think they really increase our, uh, increase our city's resilience. Since, for example, in 2003, um, um, 17, uh, 17 years ago, I was quarantined in the on the campus. I can do nothing. I can just do. I can only do the physical activities. I really support a lot on the campus. And however, I feel very. I feel uh, when our campus was open after the outbreak uh, of SARS, I really felt very happy. I felt so happy. I yeah. I can enjoyed our society, for example, the restaurants, the cinema, and the, uh, the very, the daily life of a city. So that was SAS. And now, right now, actually, I can have enjoyed some services. I mean, complimentary services are all the alternative uh, services provided by smart companies like the video, like the takeaway service, like the online commerce, e-commerce. I think uh, really, uh, so to me as a citizen, they really help me a lot. So that is my very brief and general introduction on how smart, smart technologies here in China help our cities in China and also help me actually. I also enjoy it a lot as a human being here in Beijing. Yes, thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Young. Uh, I'm quite impressed that you were able to uh, inventory it so many application and classify them. I think this would be extremely useful for uh, some of the cities who are uh, attending this uh, speaker series. We are now going to move to Liora uh, Schechter. Uh, Liora, uh, you're going to take us to Tel Aviv, I believe. The floor is yours. Thank you. I'm, I'm very glad and honored to be here with you on the webinar. And I'll give you Tel Aviv perspective of how to fight the uh, coronavirus. So first of all, I'd like to share with you a little bit the situation in Israel right now uh, due to the corona. This is uh, figures from uh, last night uh, from the World Health Organization. You can see at the left the, the spike in the number of uh, confirmed uh, cases in, in Israel. So you can see that the curve is just now starting to rise. And if you look at the figures, we have about 2,400 approximately confirmed uh, cases. Uh, the number of tests per day is 5,000, which is quite, quite high right now. Uh, we only have right now 
five dead. So, so we are in that case in, in a good situation, but we are really fearing from the spike that will start in the, in the next uh, day. And because of that figures, uh, the government in Israel decided on uh, uh, several uh, rules. Uh, school, kindergartens, university are closed. Uh, the instruction is to stay at home. You can go out only for critical jobs, only for buying groceries, uh, only for buying uh, medicine. Uh, the workplaces uh, are uh, only, only have uh, essential workers, only 30% about the workforce is uh, now uh, working. Uh, on the businesses, only the farm and the supermarkets are open. And you can really go out only for a radius of 100 meter and for a short period of uh, time. Uh, the public transportation has reduced to minimum. So that's the environment that we are working in right now. It's, it's new regulation established uh, last night only. And we as a municipality has to work in that environment and try to work as, as, as regular and have relationship with the, with the residents of the municipality. So that is the situation in the past one and a half or two weeks. So, so it's only a short period of uh, uh, time. And our first task was to move the municipality to be a virtual municipality. And what we have done is try to move all the workers to work on their home not uh, on site in the municipality. We have already a platform based on a checkpoint, but in the last two weeks, what we did is expand it to the capacity of 3000 workers. This is 300% more than the usual uh, rate. We established the procurement of licenses, laptops, expand the infrastructure, uh, decided which workers should get the ability to work from far, uh, grant the license, and we had to even instruct the uh, workers how to work virtually, how to install everything. So all of that was done in, in about one and a half uh, a week, and now everything is working uh, uh, virtually. The second stage was to uh, tackle the contact centers. And what we did is again move them, move every representative to the home. So uh, we are based on Cisco capability. So we tried and tested how to do it at home. It did all the procurement that was needed. And we just moved seven different contact center that we have in the municipality, uh, the 106, the property tax, the parking and, and uh, so on. We now have about 50 operational representatives that are working uh, from home. The third stage of, of uh, being a virtual municipality is really giving the people the capability to talk to each other. So, so have a virtual meeting, VC, uh, inside the municipality. And I can say that in the past, before the corona, the, the usage of VC was very, very low, only on the tech uh, uh, side of the municipality. Uh, so what we did during the, the last one and a half week, we adopted a new uh, technology. We are using Zoom. Uh, we did all the procurement as well, cameras, license, and, and so on. Uh, and the interesting thing was that we started from the senior management. The first people that uses the, the VC was the senior management of the municipality. In my previous slide, you can see the a VC that Mayor Huldahi, the mayor of Tel Aviv is doing with 15 of the uh, strongest mayors of, in Israel. That was the uh, first implementation. The second one is, is a formal committee, uh, a building committee of the city, but I can tell you that right now, every meeting inside the municipality is done virtually. We, we have done a 180% shift from municipality that work mainly physically to a municipality that now is working totally 
virtually. And the next stage to help the municipality tackle the, the, the idea is to really develop uh, tools uh, to help uh, uh, the municipality in, in the corona era. Uh, I will show you to you online. It's a dashboard that we have uh, developed. I will just share it with you. And what you are seeing uh, here, let me take a spotlight, is really all the places, all the confirmed places that a known corona uh, person has been in, in uh, Tel Aviv. You can see it right now. You can see on the map, you see a percentage of 70%, this 17 percentage, this is the percent of elderly people that live in that part of the city. So you can see which part of the city has more elderly people. You can see how many people are in their home and cannot move because they are sick, handicapped, and, and uh, so on. You can see how many uh, people are insulated in Tel Aviv according to our uh, health ministry. You can see how many municipality workers have reached home uh, work uh, today. This is only 22% of all the uh, workforce uh, in, in, uh, in the municipality. And so on and so on. Um, the idea that the uh, CEO of the municipality can see in one look what is happening right now in the uh, city. I will show you another thing which is related um, to the corona, we have uh, an online management of the city. You can see every event that we have on the map and uh, um, you can see the severity of problems. It is hazard that are reported from a resident. It is IoT device that report to us. It is supervisor's report that we have on ground. And what we have developed for the corona is really uh, special items that we can manage uh, online. This green chart is, is about public order, and this is reports from residents about violation of the uh, restriction of the corona. Uh, this for, you, you can pick and see each one of the events. And this is a report about the all shops in the street are opened. So uh, the municipality is going to send someone to tackle uh, uh, the problem. Uh, we can even see if we have some crowd events in the city. You can see it, uh, it's, I'm sorry, but it's zero. So you can see there are no uh, crowding events right now in the uh, city of Tel Aviv. So, so it's important to understand that this is online Whenever someone reports, it will show uh, on the uh, runtime uh, tool and we can handle it very, very fast. I will go back to the um, presentation. No. The second thing, we have done that, is how we face the residents in, uh, in uh, Tel Aviv. Uh, first of all, Tel Aviv is known as a non-stop city. We, uh, the city is very live. Every second, every minute, we have some event in the city. And you can see this is the website of the municipality. And our slogan is uh, non-stop. Uh, but due uh, to the corona and due to the restriction of movement in the city, we, have to we had to change our website and, and we took the none out of the uh, website. So Tel Aviv now is a stop city that's in the official website of the municipality. And we have three sections in the site, the visit in order to encourage people to come and visit the city. And now we had to turn the visit into the stay home uh, uh, order in order to encourage the residents to act according to the regulation. 
Another thing that we develop here in, in uh, Tel Aviv, and I should say that we have really a uh, small company of developing software. We develop all of the software of the municipality. We have about 400, 450 people that develop software for the municipality and for the residents. And this is an app, one of the apps that we developed that will help report uh, to our main call center. What we did is really add a new kind of report, a report that an elderly can, can ask for, for help, uh, and it will go straight to the municipality system, straight to the system that you have seen, and in that way it will be very easy for elderly uh, to ask aids in the municipality. A new thing that uh, uh, we are now developing, and it will be ready for next week, is really flash news, which is the ability for the municipality to reach proactively a very large part of the population. It's going to be push notification, so it's going to pop up and you cannot uh, avoid it. It could be news about new regulation. It could be news that the uh, municipality uh, would like to inform the residents mainly about the situation in the corona and we find it essential to, to be able to reach each one of the residents in a uh, fast way and in a very efficient uh, way. So, so that's things that are done, especially because we are in, in, in that um, specific time in, in life. I think the third thing, thing that we tackle is, is how we um, take the uh, innovative startup uh, ecosystem that we have in Tel Aviv and try to embrace them and, and make them partners in trying to tackle the uh, coronavirus. And we started with uh, uh, startups that uh, are dealing with uh, volunteering, uh, volunteers. Uh, the first one is uh, called the Door to Door. It's, it's about volunteering that it's not done on routine uh, times. Uh, if I'm a very busy person, I don't have to volunteer, I do not have time to volunteer every Tuesday uh, to help someone. But if the volunteering is done on the way, when I finish working, it's not a commitment that I'm, ta I'm taking day to day and, or week to week, it's, it's a convenient way. So uh, that's the, the main target of the, that startup. Uh, they are working uh, closely with our welfare um, department and I can tell you that in normal days they get about five calls uh, for help. It can be from the municipality or, or from the um, elderly themselves and now we have about 100 calls per day so you can see the increase in the uh, need for uh, volunteering. Another uh, similar app is a uh, tribute which is an app that was uh, uh, adapted by the education system in, in Israel. And now, in, in the past weeks, what we are trying to do is uh, adopt the platform and try to uh, engage the uh, young people uh, from, from the school to help in doing uh, uh, volunteering activities to, to uh, get uh, food, to the houses of the elderly if they need something to, to buy medicine for them and, and uh, so on. So we use the community with the help of the startups in order to help the uh, part of uh, uh, population, the elderly that we need to help in, in these days. I think last but not the least, uh, we want to create a virtual hackathon that deals with the uh, challenges of Corona. Uh, we in Tel Aviv have done uh, physical hackathons. Just last uh, week, we, uh, year we did uh, three hackathons, and in the next we week we hope to initiate the first virtual hackathon that deals with uh, uh, Corona. And the idea is that the senior management of the municipality will publish the main challenges that they have in this uh, period of time. Uh, we have a virtual platform that uh, 
anyone that is at home can join, uh, say that he wants to tackle one of the challenges, can join and, and pick his group members with a virtual um, platform, and we'll have mentors virtually helping the, the groups. And uh, at the end, uh, uh, judges, judges that will uh, select the winning uh, proposition. Uh, because the corona is not just uh, an issue of uh, Tel Aviv or not just the issue of the state of Israel, I think it will be a very uh, nice and important thing if more cities will join us in making the virtual hackathon. And I'm calling to you if you are representative of a, of a city uh, to say, uh, to, to come and join and do the hackathon together with us. And if I'll have to conclude, I'll say that the action of Tel Aviv municipality was first to uh, uh, take the municipality and make it virtual and produce tools in order to the municipality to work properly in, in the days of coronavirus. The second was the target of contacting the resident constantly. And the third and the last was the leveraging of the innovation force in, in Tel Aviv to help us all together uh, try to make a better life in these uh, uh, coming weeks. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, Yora. These were two uh, fascinating presentations. Uh, Professor Young giving us an overview of uh, uh, technology use in China, quite extensive overview, and then Yora taking us uh, deep into uh, how you responded to the crisis in, in Tel Aviv. Uh, I think your presentation was particularly interesting because you really showed us step by step how you went, uh, went through uh, implementation of, of technologies. Uh, we have quite a few questions. Lauren and I are gonna try to group them and then uh, go uh, with one group at a time. Um, I will uh, ask the first question to both of you, uh, Professor Ying and uh, Yora, uh, and then Laura will, uh, Lauren will come with the next one and, and we'll uh, play tag team. The first question really that I'd like to ask is, is have you had an opportunity to, maybe it's too early for you, Loria, but uh, Professor Ying to evaluate do an evaluation of the different ways people interact with the different technologies, the different apps, uh, in particular the elderly. Uh, how did you overcome some of the uh, some of the limitation? Uh, how would you rank the different type of technologies uh, and how effective they have been in uh, reaching a particular groups? It's a pretty open question, but it's about inclusiveness, how do you make sure you reach everyone uh, when, when using the technology? Maybe starting with Professor Young, and then we'll go to you, uh, Yora, for your insights from Tel Aviv. Professor Ying? Uh, okay, Francis, uh, thank you for all the question. So actually, now for me, I think since my parents are also senior as well, and um, actually in the context of our my home country, Mm, uh, the coverage of the smart, uh, for example, especially for smartphones are quite large actually, yeah, even to elderly. So generally, mm, um, uh, most of them are able, some of them, I mean, a, a proportion of them are able to access um, services using WeChat. I think WeChat app, now they, for example, seniors just uh, to be familiar with WeChat and uh, and that they are able to access some services, for example, like to buy some food and to report something or to contact with their, uh, I mean, the young people in the family. Uh, so actually the experience here uh, for seniors, they do not need to be familiar with a lot of apps. Uh, since, uh, for example, each app is uh, quite different from the user difference. So that is my first uh, first response. Uh, I think WeChat is really a good thing for senior people. 
And second is, so here in, uh, uh, according to my observation in Beijing, there are really the officials from the, uh, uh, for example, at the community level. And so they also provide services, the so-called smart or digital services to help the seniors to use the smartphone to order something, for example. And really there are also some people are not able to access the smart technologies. Uh, for example, especially the mobile phone apps. Uh, so they are, so they have to turn to their sons and their daughters, for example. So that are my response. Thank you. Yeah, they help. However, I have to admit, they are really uh, a few portion of people are not able to enjoy the smart technologies I mentioned, especially the mobile uh, phone, smartphone apps. Yes. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Dr. Ying. Yora, you want to add to that? What's your experience in, um, yeah. in Tel Aviv? Yeah, I think it's, uh, as you said, uh, it, it's been only a short time uh, to have a real uh, conclusion during the, the virus time in, in, in right now. But uh, I can tell you generally that uh, people in Israel are very, uh, uh, they are adopting technology very fast. And we have, for instance, a resident club that we call uh, Digital. And we were afraid that the elderly would not uh, uh, participate uh, in the club, will not register, will not come to the activity. Uh, and we see, to our surprise, that the part of population which is the most active in uh, digital is the elderly. And we did a poll to see the satisfaction level uh, of all the members of the digital club. Uh, and the elderly were the most satisfied part of the population from the uh, uh, digital tools. So it was very surprising for us. I'm sure it's not relevant for every elderly in the, in the municipality, uh, but they are learning. They are learning fast. They have their uh, children and grandchildren. They want to talk to them every day. So they are using WhatsApp, uh, uh, Zoom, FaceTime, uh, whatever, because it's an essential way of communication, right, for, uh, in, in, this, in this era. Thank you, Leora, and thank you, Dr. Yang. The next, I think, grouping of questions is really about the lasting impacts of these technologies that are being adopted and what you think about the potential for these technologies in the future. Uh, both in recovery efforts, but also in what potentially might the use of these technologies mean for life in the city, social life and economic life. So uh, specifically, I think for, for Dr. Yang, you mentioned that you think that IoT technologies are going to be the most helpful for citizens. And so could you speak a little bit more to why you make that prediction, in particular coming from, from your background. Um, and, and Leora, you talked about your three stages of the virtual municipality. Were these preconceived stages or were these stages that you moved into because of the crisis? And how, how has this uh, transition to a virtual municipality um, impacted the functions and the decision-making um, of the municipality? I, I think uh, it's not... Um... It's not nice to think that way, but in, in our perspective, moving the uh, municipality uh, to, to being virtual uh, is really an acceleration uh, of the process that should have been done in the municipality. We might say that the uh, uh, coronavirus was really a, a trigger that did things faster. We did in one and a half weeks, uh, uh, things that I th think should, should uh, have lasted in normal times about one and a half year. Not because of the technology and the matureness of the technology, because of the state of mind uh, of the senior management. Uh, they are uh, a little bit old at age. Uh, the ability to use computers from home, to, to use uh, uh, VCs, 
was not an option. And then, whoops, in, in one and a half uh, uh, weeks, it's, it's the only tool that they are using and, and, they, and they are happy about it. So I, I foresee that the, after the uh, uh, coronavirus, we will start having a mixed municipality, not only physical as in the past, not only virtual, like in the area of the virus, but a mix. And it was really an acceleration of the, the process. In the uh, means of IoT, our vision is that our task is really uh, to see uh, everything that is happening in the street of the, the city. We will not need the residents to report the municipality about hazards. Uh, we will have cameras and analytics and the ability to extract events from the uh, cameras and uh, analytics. So we'll hopefully know most of the events, most of the hazard that happen on the public areas. And in that sentence, I'll also relate to privacy because it's an important issue when you're talking about cameras. And so we have technology in order to eliminate uh, the faces of the people so it will not uh, penetrate the uh, um, privacy of the, the people. So for us, it's not a question. We are rapidly advancing into a, a very advanced analytic and a lot of cameras. And we are trying to put everything on the real time uh, as you have seen it and be able to see uh, hazards fast and act very fast in order to close the, the problems. And then the other aspect of the sharing community, the ability to bring people together that's a very important uh, a vector for us. Uh, we, we are working very hard in order to find tools that are managed by the municipality or managed by the people in order to, to make relationship between uh, residents that live in the same street, people that like the same things. We have right now a, a virtual coin, Tel Aviv virtual coin that we, if we have a problem with businesses uh, right now in the Corona age, we encourage Tel Avivians to consume the virtual uh, coin and buy things in, in uh, uh, shops that are in Tel Aviv in order to help them cope in these uh, hard uh, times. Uh, okay, Laurie, uh, thank you for your question. Actually, uh, actually uh, I like to say, for technologies, um, actually, I think uh, the, in the in the background of the industrial revolution, I mean, especially for the first one, the recent one, um, the technologies are called the disruptive technologies. That is to say, we are not able, we human beings are not easy to stop that, to stop the coming of the, uh, the, 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 the so-called disruptive technologies. So, however, uh, for combat with uh, the virus, I think technologies are really very important in addition to medical issues. So tech and the mice are the both important for, for us, for our human beings to improve the quality of life uh, and the length of our life. And uh, actually, to me, technologies are not always a good thing. For example, so like uh, the Liao Ros has mentioned the privacy issue, I also like to mention the screen time. For example, we have the statistics in China, the average screen time for the China citizen is around, around six hours. What is six hours? Is as long as our sleeping time. My sleeping time is around six hours. So there are also some publications about how much is too much for screen time. Okay, so let's come back to the IOTs, the sensors you mentioned. I have to, uh, so why I was mention, uh, mentioning sensors will be the one of the most important smart technologies in the next uh, 10 years because they are getting cheaper and cheaper. Uh, for example, uh, 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 for the Internet of Things, all the Internet of, of Human, all the nature, they are getting more and more cheaper. It is easy to attach to a person. Uh, and easy to attach to one bottle of water, for example, the portable water, and uh, the sensor can track how many times you finish. 
the bottle of water. So that is to say, we are able to better understand our human being. We are also better are able to better understand our uh, the space. So in China currently, now there are more and more discussion on the promising future cities. For example, the Tencent, the internet company, technology company are collaborating with the uh, the real estate company, the developers, then they are uh, uh, launching some future city projects and uh, quite open to internet of things, to sensors. So I think they really help a lot and uh, they are promising and uh, it is disruptive. Uh, that is my understanding. So we are not able to stop it. <laughs> so that is my, maybe a, a little bit sharp, uh, 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 sharping, <laughs> uh, so-called opinion. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Jodine. Professor, and maybe one last uh, set of questions, because the time is uh, coming to an end. But a lot of the, a lot of our audience come from countries, from cities that don't have the resources of Tel Aviv or Wuhan, those are very, fairly sophisticated cities, or Shanghai or Beijing. And in your view, what what use of technology should they prioritize? What do you think has been the most useful as a as a municipality um, in tackling the current crisis? What technology should they pri prioritize? Uh, also, what's the role and how can they collaborate with technology companies and internet providers and and others? And finally, uh, our friends from Mozambique ask. Uh, how could they uh, get assistance? How could they get any any idea on how they could get support from uh, China or from from Tel Aviv uh, for them to to tackle the current crisis? So maybe we'll start with Sri Ying, and then uh, move to you, uh, Yora. Or yeah. Your... So actually, in China. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so actually, uh, we are also developing countries, and uh, I have uh, introduced the ten technologies, and among of the I think maybe several of them are showcased, not so extensively applied and uh, very useful and uh, full coverage for the whole people, for the whole medical staff. Uh, according to my understanding, and for developing countries, for for cities with, uh, I mean, limited capacity, I think the uh, mobile uh, internet is the most important thing. I mean, the smartphone, since the smartphone are uh, anywhere in the world. And, for uh, and uh, uh, so maybe from the government side, uh, so actually for the, for the China's application, for almost all the cases I have mentioned, maybe only a very few proportion contributions are from the government only. Really, um, I mean, uh, in China here, some internet companies and technology companies really contribute a lot to the country uh, without, with no charge. So why? Um, so uh, according to my understanding, maybe so um, since the technology company and the internet company also need business for smart city program in China. So maybe for example, after the, the COVID-19, so since they have very good evaluation from the government in this way, they will have better business. So that's why they are doing the services freely to the government. So I think for the, uh, for the developing country, I think mobile phones are quite important to how to better utilize the mobile phone, the smartphone are quite important to my understanding. Since in China, in very remote area in the country, they also rely on the smartphone very much. For example, the government developed a very easy to use uh, application to let people to report uh, report the, uh, uh, the, 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 the physical condition issues. And in this way, the government can understand uh, how people are feeling, how people are, are, uh, are in the state, in different stages of the, the, the COVID-19. And in this way, the, better, uh, the government can better manage to categorize uh, the potential diseases in this way to optimize. Now, so anyway, to conclude, to my understanding, uh, and even to uh, for the from the application in some remote uh, counties in the country here, a mobile phone 
uh, smartphone are quite important. Yeah. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Thank, th thank you, Dr. Ying. I have the un unfortunate duty of starting to bring us to a close here. Um, there were a number of questions, and I will look to Leora to also verify this, about how cities can join the hackathon um, and uh, what are the next steps. We had uh, an opportunity to connect right before this, and uh, what Leora shared with us um, from the Global Resilient Cities Network was that uh, if your city is interested in joining this virtual hackathon about uh, technologies ca that can respond to the coronavirus, um, first and most important is that you have the interest and the willingness to participate. Um, and then importantly, that your senior management of the city is interested and wants to take part and can help to identify a, a challenge. Um, and that the platform for this hackathon uh, will be provided uh, from, this, from the Israel side and that we'll have more details on that in the next couple of days. So what we've committed to do from the Global Resilient Cities Network is to share that information uh, with our network and with those who are participating in the webinar so that you can express interest. Leora, is that correct? Is there anything else we should add about the hackathon? Correct, perfect. Okay, Mitsuyan, Kolakavo, Dodaraba. We um, now will just mention that this, uh, this series will continue, the speaker series, on a weekly basis. Next week, we'll be very fortunate to have presenters from Buenos Aires talking about their experience in managing the virus. We will send out more details um, by Monday of next week. We will also include with those emails, links to the presentations and the recording from today. Um, also, as with last week, there were some questions that unfortunately we did not get to within the time of the presentation. We will uh, keep those questions and we will reach out to our panelists uh, to see if they can provide offline answers and we will provide some of those additional answers in the notes from this session. Um, and with that, I just want to thank everyone again for participating in the speaker series tonight um, and really send everyone all our best wishes uh, to be healthy, um, to be safe, and really to take care of each other in these challenging times. Um, and with that, we'll say good night from Singapore and uh, wish you all a good evening or afternoon or day ahead. Oh, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you, everyone.